I didn't actually check if we were making any sound here. Hang on. Oh, do you guys remember Olive? She's, uh, she's pretty much studio approved at this point, and she's a very good girl when she's not biting me. Isn't that right? Uh, hopefully she'll stay down here in her bed. We'll see what happens. How's it going everybody? It's Scott, I'm back. Uh, I've been away, I was uh, down in California for a top secret adventure that I probably won't actually end up doing any content for because it was uh, something that doesn't really need to be on YouTube or anywhere for that matter, but it was great. Uh, and maybe one day I'll get to talk about it, maybe not. It's all very mysterious. Anyways, uh, I'm gonna move this camera over here because we're not gonna talk about that yet. We are talking about, where did she go, Olive? Okay, we are talking about the Fujifilm GFX 50R, which I don't have anymore, which is, it's weird to make a video about a camera that I'm not able to hold in my hands. I sent it back to Fujifilm a couple of days ago uh, and I took some pictures of me putting it in the box and sending it away. Uh, here they are. I, I have a bit of a cold, so uh, if I sound funny or if I'm talking at a weird volume, it's because I can't really hear out of this ear right now. It's all full of fluid. Okay, so the, the, the Fujifilm GFX lineup is such a strange lineup for me um, because it's not for me. It's for people that need medium format digital need it for a reason and I am not one of those people. I am perfectly happy with APS-C and even full frame is probably more than I would never need for what I do photography and video wise. That being said, I'll probably pick up a full frame something at some point just so I can use some of my vintage glass on a full frame sensor. That is literally the only reason I would ever need a full frame digital camera. But the GFX 50R, as far as GFX cameras go, is by far my favorite. I like it a lot more than I liked the GFX 50S. I think ergonomically it's much better. Size wise it's much better. Looks wise it's much better. Performance wise it's identical. The 45 2.8 was the lens that I had. Uh, which is the perfect lens for that camera in my opinion. It's a 35 f2 equivalent, which 35 millimeter is such a great focal length for a camera like that that just begs to be a walking around camera. Now, size-wise, uh, I did take the GFX 50R on this trip that I was just on, which included a lot of walking in busy places and it wasn't really as cumbersome as I thought it was going to be. It's kind of the equivalent of taking something like an X-T3 with a battery grip on it and maybe the 56 1.2, like size-wise. I feel like they're very comparable weight-wise also. I really enjoyed using that camera. I think I enjoyed it a lot more than I expected to given my experience with the GFX 50S. Would I ever buy a GFX 50R? Yeah, if I had the money, I probably would, but it's not an inexpensive camera by any means and just would really chew into my plastic point-and-shoot film camera budget and I just can't see myself getting away from that anytime soon. I've got an extensive collection of really questionable plastic 35 millimeter point-and-shoot cameras. What are you doing up on that chair? I just told, I just told everybody you were studio approved and now you're up on the chair. So I think that for anybody that needs that sort of crazy dynamic range, anybody that needs uh, an insanely high megapixel count, anybody that's doing professional portraiture or professional landscape photography, I think the GFX 50R is a fantastic choice. Maybe more so than the 50S. It's less money than the 50S and you get the exact same performance out of it. So I can't really see a reason to get the 50S over the 50R. Maybe if you like the grip and you like the interchangeable finders you can put on it, then maybe that's something worthwhile. There's probably some other stuff that's better about the 50S that I'm just not advanced enough to realize, but from my naive point of view, the 50R is 
just a way better bargain than the 50S. So if you're looking for uh, a medium format interchangeable lens camera that is not going to break the bank in terms of medium format interchangeable lens cameras, it's really hard to beat the GFX 50R, like really hard to beat. And uh, it looks great. It looks just like a an XE3, like just huge. She's a good girl most of the time, aren't you? You think I'm talking to you? You have no idea what's happening here. I got a brand new X-T30 from Fujifilm. I bought this. I'm not getting it for review. I bought it. Uh, this is the 18 to 55 f 2.8 to 4 the XF kit lens which is honestly one of the best kit lenses I've ever used this kit lens I already owned when I bought this camera I got it with the 14 sorry the what is it 15 to 45 power zoom kit lens which is really not a very good lens however it's a great lens to stick on my X-T20, which it's on right now, which is gonna be my permanent studio camera. It is here. It is here forever. Well, not forever, but for the foreseeable future, it's just slightly wider than the 18 that I was using before. Uh, F3.5 is fine for a studio lens because I control the lighting. I control everything here, uh, and that totally works for me. And uh, the autofocus is pretty good, uh, as long as it's it's trying to lock onto this uh, cabinet over here right now, because I think it sees Chewbacca's face in this picture, and it doesn't like my glasses, but what are you gonna do? But, uh, so I'm gonna be doing a review on this coming up pretty quickly. I will say right off the bat, there's one design choice on this camera, the screen's all dirty, that I hate. And it's this Q button right here on the thumb grip. I hit this thing, Every single time I uh, am holding this camera, I'm changing my Q menu, my quick menu. I've had to figure out different ways to hold this thing. I just saw a video from Omar Gonzalez that there's a firmware fix that you can put a bit of a delay on this button, but it doesn't seem to have fixed the issue at all. And I hope in a further uh, firmware update in the future that you can just disable this button because I don't know about you guys, but I don't use the quick menu ever. When you hit the menu button, you get your my menu on here, which is to me the same thing as a quick menu. It gives you one, two, three, four, five, six, seven options. This does give you more. It gives you 12, I think, or 16, but I don't, I, if I need to dive into 12 or 16 settings on a regular basis, I'm just gonna scream, basically. But, uh, yeah, I had this camera with me on this trip too. This thing is fantastic. The face tracking on it is unreal. And the battery life I actually noticed is quite a bit better, I think, than the X-T20. Oh, uh, battery life. That's another thing I wanted to quickly touch on on the GFX 50R. In my first video, I complained about the battery life. I only got like 150 or 180 shots on the first battery. I had some pretty wacky settings going, so I adjusted uh, a few things, and I ended up getting, I think, 380 shots, like a, a full day, like a full day with some left over out of one of the batteries, so disregard my battery issue with the 50R, it is normal. Um, that's it, just wanted a quick update, say hi, tell you how much I love the GFX 50R, tell you I got an X-T30, uh, I also bought a couple of film cameras and some really cool film. I shot a bunch of film on this trip too on a plastic point and shoot because that is my brand I think now is plastic point and shoot guy. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. I gotta get this thing edited. There's not gonna be any sample pictures. There might be a couple sample pictures just randomly thrown in here for uh, shits and giggles. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much gonna be it. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for sticking around. I will try to make videos more often. No promises. Bye.